assalamu alaikum dear students welcome to dr umi lectures in our previous sessions we have studied how blood clots when there is injury to a vessel wall have you ever wondered how blood when it is flowing normally in uninjured blood vessel why does not clot so this is today's topic we are going to study the anticoagulant mechanisms which are present inside the body and they do not allow blood to clot in a normal blood vessel there are two types of factors one is physical and the other one are chemical factors these factor prevent the clotting process in a normal blood vessel so first let's talk about the physical factors the first factor is streamline flow of blood as you know that blood flows in layers in our blood vessel so when this blood is flowing in the vessel in a streamlined manner it gets less chances for the platelets and clotting factors to come in contact with the endothelial lining so this decreases the chances of clotting it means that whenever there is stasis of blood for example if a person is bedridden who is having stasis of blood in the leg veins there is increased risk of chances of blood clot and deep vein thrombosis can occur in the leg veins moreover whenever the blood flow becomes turbulent which means the blood layers are flowing in different directions this also increases the risk of injury to the endothelial lining and that increases the chances of clotting factors and platelets to come in contact and that increases the risk of clotting second factor is smoothness of endothelial surface these endothelial cells normally they are not rough they are not damaged they are smooth so that's why there are less chances for the clotting factor number 12 to come in contact with this normal endothelial lining hence the intrinsic pathway is not activated so there is no cascade reaction of the intrinsic pathway no blood clotting so when there is injury to these endothelial cells the surface becomes rough and the clotting factor number 12 which comes in contact it becomes activated that stimulates the intrinsic pathway and hence the clotting occurs the third important physical factor which prevents clotting in a normal uninjured blood vessel is the layer of glycocalyx on the endothelium this endothelium on its surface is having mucopolysaccharides which are negatively charged these are made by the carbohydrates and because this glycocalyx is negatively charged it repels other negative substances clotting factors which are negatively charged and also the surface of platelets which is negatively charged is repelled by this negatively charged glycocalyx hence the platelets and clotting factors they do not attach to the endothelium which is normal and hence the clotting is prevented so just to summarize the continuous flow of blood in a streamlined manner and also the smooth endothelial lining surface and the negatively charged glycocalyx on the endothelial cells prevents the platelets and clotting factors to be activated and hence these physical factors behave as natural anticoagulants within the blood vessel now let's talk about some chemical factors which play their role in natural anticoagulation as you know that most of the clotting factors in our blood are proteins and normally they are inactive they are not activated unless there is trauma to the endothelium to the vessel wall or to the tissues so it means that normally clotting factors which are inactive they do not allow clotting to occur the normal or intact endothelium produces two very important chemicals which are called as nitric oxide and pgi2 prostaglandin i2 which is also called as prostacyclin these two chemical factors they are very important vasodilators which means that when they are produced from the healthy endothelium they cause dilation of the blood vessel another important function of these chemicals is that they prevent the aggregation of platelets whenever there is injury to the endothelial lining then the production of nitric oxide and prostaglandin i2 is decreased and that contributes to blood clotting i hope you already know about prostaglandin i2 or prostacyclin which is a very important member of eicosanoid family it's a local hormone which is produced from arachidonic acid which is released from the phospholipids of the cell membrane another important chemical which is important for normal anticoagulation in the blood is thrombomodulin this thrombomodulin is a protein which is attached with the normal endothelium of the blood vessels and it removes thrombin from the blood thrombin which is activated form of prothrombin is clotting factor number 2 and because thrombin plays a very important multitasking role in multiple steps of the extrinsic pathway and intrinsic pathway and the common pathway 
and hence stimulating the cascade reaction of the blood clotting in a positive feedback fashion this thrombin must be removed by the thrombomodulin hence the blood clotting tendency is decreased this thrombin and thrombomodulin complex not only removes thrombin which is activated factor number two from the blood and hence it uh, prevents clotting it also activates an anticoagulant which is called as protein c protein c when it is present in blood it is inactive so normally protein c in our blood is inactive protein c this protein c is activated by the thrombin thrombomodulin complex to active protein c this active protein c in the presence of protein S, which is cofactor for protein C, inactivate active factor number 5 and already active factor number 8. So, just to summarize, this thrombomodulin, which is a protein attached with the endothelium of the blood vessels, this can bind with the thrombin, which is activated clotting factor number 2. This thrombin, because it's a very important factor to stimulate the extrinsic pathway, intrinsic pathway, and the common pathway of blood clotting. When this thrombin is removed by the thrombomodulin, in this way blood clotting tendency is decreased. And also this complex of thrombin with thrombomodulin, it activates an anticoagulant which is protein C. Normally it is present in blood as an inactive protein. When it is activated by the thrombin thrombomodulin complex, then this protein C in the presence of protein S which acts as a cofactor, then it will inactivate clotting factor number 5 and clotting factor number 8 which are already activated. And this is done by causing proteolysis of factor number 5 and factor number 8 by the protein C. There is a condition in which clotting factor number 5 is resistant because of mutation and hence it is not inactivated by the protein C. And that will increase the risk of clotting because anticoagulation will be decreased and the risk of clotting will be increased. There is another condition in which either protein C or protein S may be deficient in our blood and that can also decrease the anticoagulation and hence it will increase the clotting tendency and the risk of thromboembolism will be increased. Another important factor which can cause anticoagulation are the fibrin fibers. So when there is injury to this vessel wall, there is platelet plug formation which is strengthened by the fibrin fibers. These fibrin fibers they are made from fibrinogen protein. And these fibrin fibers, they make a meshwork which is running in different directions. About 85 to 90 percent of the thrombin protein which is formed during the process of blood clotting, that will be removed by these fibrin fibers by being adsorbed on the surface of fibrin fibers. So in this way, because thrombin is a small molecule but fibrinogen is a big molecule and these long threads of fibrin they can adsorb small molecules of thrombin on the surface of fibrin fibers. In this way, more than 80% of the thrombin can be removed from blood. And because thrombin is a very important positive feedback mechanism to increase the blood clotting, by removing the extra thrombin, fibrin fibers will not allow the spread of thrombin to the other nearby normal tissues. So the clot will form only at the area where injury has taken place. And because thrombin don't spread to the other normal tissues, and hence it prevents the excessive formation of clots in the normal nearby tissues. Another important factor which is antithrombin 3. So this antithrombin 3, it removes that 10 to 15 percent of thrombin which does not adsorb on the surface of the fibrin fibers and hence it will contribute to the anticoagulation. So this is antithrombin 3 protein, AT3, antithrombin 3 protein and it binds with thrombin protein which is activated clotting factor number 2 in our blood. So this antithrombin 3 protein it combines with rest of 10 to 15 percent of thrombin which does not adsorb on the surface of the fibrinogen protein. In this way this thrombin when it is removed it will not activate fibrinogen to fibrin and no more fibrin clot will be formed. Moreover this antithrombin 3 and thrombin complex also inactivates the already activated clotting factor number 9, 10, 11 and 12. Another very powerful natural anticoagulant in our body is heparin. Normally this uh, heparin is in very low concentration in our plasma. However, pharmacologically this heparin is usually used in a very high concentration to cause anticoagulation. This heparin molecule, it has very less anticoagulant activity when it is alone. However, this heparin is a very important cofactor for this antithrombin 3. So here this is heparin. It behaves as cofactor 
for antithrombin 3. So when it binds with antithrombin 3, then it will increase the anticoagulant property of antithrombin 3 up to hundreds to thousands of times. Heparin is an injectable anticoagulant and its action is instantaneous. And because it activates antithrombin 3, in this way it will remove clotting factor number 2 which is thrombin by complexing with it. And because heparin activates antithrombin 3, hence it will remove thrombin which is activated clotting factor number 2. It also inactivates the already activated clotting factor number 9, 10, 11 and 12. And because these factors they are present in the intrinsic pathway, in this way heparin will decrease the activity of intrinsic pathway. Which cells in our body produces heparin? Heparin which is natural anticoagulant which is produced from mast cells and basophils. Mast cells are basophilic cells which are present in the pericapillary connective tissue especially in our lungs and in liver. And basophils are granulocytes which are present in our blood circulation. Both of these cells produce heparin and heparin is very important for anticoagulation in our body especially in lungs and liver. Why in lungs and liver? It's because our lungs and liver both of them receive a lot of embolic clots which are coming from other tissues in which venous blood is flowing slowly. For example small clots may be formed in the veins of our legs and those clots they break away, become embolous, come to our lungs. The action of heparin will prevent the further growth of clots because it will remove thrombin and also other activated factor from blood and in this way by the anticoagulant action of the heparin clot will not increase in size and the fibrinolytic system will break the already present clot. So just to summarize there are two types of factors which prevent coagulation in the normal vessel when it is not injured. One is the physical factors and the other ones are chemical factors. The streamlined flow of blood and also smooth endothelium when it is not injured and the presence of negatively charged glycocalyx will prevent the attachment and activation of platelets and also the clotting factors and hence the coagulation will be prevented. Some important chemical factors are that the clotting factors they are already inactive in our blood. They are only activated when there is trauma to the tissue. And hence in normal uninjured vessel the clotting will not occur because the clotting factors they are in inactive form. The production of nitric oxide and prostaglandin I2 which are very important vasodilator from the normal endothelium causes vasodilation and also inhibits the activation and aggregation of platelets. Thromomodulin is a protein which is attached with the normal endothelium. It binds with thrombin and hence it removes the activated clotting factor number 2 and prevents the spread of clot. It also activates the anticoagulant protein which is protein C and in the presence of protein S this protein C will inactivate clotting factor number 5 and clotting factor number 8 which are already activated. And by inactivating these two clotting factors it will cause anticoagulation. In a disease in which clotting factor number 5 is mutated there will be increased risk of clotting because protein C will be unable to inactivate clotting factor number 5. And also in those diseases in which protein C or protein S are deficient, there will be less anticoagulation and increased risk of clotting or more chances of thromboembolism. Fibrin fibers remove about 85-90% to 90 of the thrombin which is formed in our blood when a vessel is injured and clot is formed. These fibrin fibers, they absorb this thrombin on its surface and remaining 10 to 15 percent of the thrombin it will be removed by antithrombin 3 which is a very important alpha globulin present in our plasma. This antithrombin 3 it complexes with thrombin and removes the remaining 10 to 15 percent of the thrombin from our blood. However, this antithrombin 3 for its activity needs a very important cofactor which is heparin. This increases the activity of antithrombin 3 up to hundreds of thousands of times and in this way this antithrombin 3 it will cleave and inactivate the already activated clotting factor numbers 9, 10, 11 and 12 which are very important in the intrinsic pathway. And in this way antithrombin 3 and heparin they decrease the function of intrinsic pathway of blood clotting. Now in the end I would like to talk about Virchow's triad of thrombosis which will explain here how by decreasing some of these anticoagulant factors the risk of clotting will be increased. This is called as Virchow's triad of thrombosis. In this case there are three important factors. One is stasis of blood or altered blood flow. For example if a patient is bedridden, so there is more chances of uh, blood to flow slowly in the vessel and hence the platelets and clotting factors they are more likely to come in contact with the endothelial surface become activated and the clotting cascade will be started and blood clot will form.
second important factor is endothelial injury endothelium of the blood vessel which is normally smooth it may be injured by surgery by some cut or by trauma so whenever this endothelium is injured there is less production of nitric oxide and prostaglandin i2 which means there will be less chances of anticoagulation but at the same time there are more production of procoagulant factors and also endothelin which is a very important vasoconstrictor causes vasoconstriction third important factor in this virkos triad is hypercoagulability which means that some of the procoagulant factors have increased now in this case i will mention some of the anticoagulants which are decreased for example in case of mutation of the clotting factor number 5 or in case of deficiency of protein s or protein c the anticoagulation will be decreased which means there will be hypercoagulability and this will increase the risk of thrombosis so this virkos triad which is stasis or altered flow of blood injury to the endothelial surface and hypercoagulability this explains when one or more of these factors are present they increase the risk of clotting so dear students in today's session we have studied how anticoagulation occurs inside the body in our next session we will study how anticoagulation occurs outside of the body for example in laboratory or in some machine thank you so much for watching this video see you next time with another video